It was a very serious decision to make because I knew that if I would go straight to CRNA school, it would be kind of like all or nothing. And I'll tell you, I'll be very honest. I'll start to go on this downward spiral of I should have made that other choice. It's like poison. It affects everything. If you live in regret, nothing that you do in the present matters. Welcome to the Nice Veins World Podcast. This is the number one podcast for nurses who want to live that next level life. I am Nene Pablo, host of this podcast, registered nurse and creator of Nice Veins Bro. Today we are talking about living with regret. I wasn't going to record this, but for purposes of hashtag transparency and being honest and open about uh, my personal maybe struggles it can help somebody else. The best thing to do is be open about some of the things that I that I go through because I feel like I can't be the only one that goes through these things. So we're talking about regret because this is something personal. Um, I have a fear of regret. And so, you know, there's people out there that try to live life, oh, I want to live life with no regrets. I want to live life with no regrets. And I just feel like that's not, number one, realistic. And number two, it doesn't give the opportunity for us to learn things from regret. If we try to uh, escape, whether it's pain, whether it's uh, suffering, whether it's anything negative, if we try to escape too quickly, I have a feeling that, um, you know, we don't learn the lessons that some sometimes these things that are inevitable uh, can teach us some of these big life lessons. And I feel like there's things to learn with regret. So number one, it's not realistic because we are going to live with regret. I think it's kind of stupid. I mean, think about the, for example, if you were to think about someone who cheated on their spouse and has absolutely no regret, would you want to be associated with that person? I mean, no regret at all. Someone who was texting while driving and, you know, ended up killing people because of that mistake and has zero regret. That's living with no regrets. Um, I get the point that people use when they say that, but I think that we dismiss it too quickly and we realize that there's actually good things about regret. So I don't want to knock it off completely. However, as with many, many things in this life, there needs to be a balance because if you let regret overtake your life, it is extremely damaging to your uh, psyche. So this is personal to me because, like I said, I deal with regret constantly and I fear regret. It actually causes me to not want to make choices. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons of regret and how to deal with regret when it starts to overwhelm you because that is not something we want to happen. So that's what we're going to talk about. Stick around. Hola mi gente, everybody has a crazy nursing story to tell. If you want to share yours with the world, send it to me. I'll feature it here on the podcast and you can get my take on it. You can also ask me questions, love questions. Remember, HIPAA rules do apply when you're telling your story, of course, and I will make sure you remain anonymous. I don't know what you're waiting for. Send me a message, nicevainsbro.com slash podcast. That's again, nicevainsbro.com slash podcast. Looking forward to it. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and the cons of regret. I would say that uh, the pros about regret would mean that it kind of, it, that it holds you accountable. It's the idea of guilt um, when you do something wrong. I would hope that people, the people of this beautiful earth, will feel regret when they do something, when they do something stupid or when they do something that they shouldn't have done. Okay, I would hope that people feel regret or sorrow over the thing that they did. They would have a feeling inside of them that would tell them that if I had gone back, I wish I wouldn't have done it. That doesn't mean right? It's not mutually exclusive to the fact that, you know, we can't learn from our mistakes. Because I think that the point that people make whenever they say that they don't live with regret, it's like, well, I wouldn't have learned my lesson any other way. I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't made those choices. So I don't regret anything. And I think that's kind of dumb. 
you know, there's a saying that says that the smart person learns from their mistakes. The wise person learns from other people's mistakes. And I hope that we are all wise. If you can avoid dumb mistakes, avoid them. You know, I don't think everybody needs to learn off of making the mistake themselves. Sometimes they do because we're stubborn people. But uh, it definitely holds us accountable. Notice that I'm saying that there's a difference between the guilt and I'm not calling it shame. I think that they're very different things. I think that there's good things with guilt. Um, when it comes to shame, I think that, the, you know, it's not the same thing. Shame is something completely different that I think that uh, we need to fight against. But guilt and regret are good things. It's what we call conscience, people. It's what we call the Holy Spirit, if you're Christian. Okay, regret is a good thing. It improves our social connections because if you have guilt about something, you're going to be more likely to apologize about that thing. I would like to live with a person who feels regret for hurting my feelings. I like the fact that my wife and I feel regretful for bad things that we tell each other or, or you know, making bad assumption, uh, assumptions about each other. When you make a mistake uh, and you feel the need to apologize to someone else, that actually improves your social connections and regret has something to do with it. Okay, you learn lessons. Pain is a good teacher. Too often we try to escape, like I said in the beginning, too often we try to escape these negative emotions like pain and regret and sorrow and mourning and all of that. And we don't let it sit in our lives for it to teach us a lesson before we move forward. I'm not saying that we sit there and we stay there. I'm saying that we let it teach us a lesson. Pain is a good teacher. Regret is a good teacher. It reveals something about us, okay? Uh, a lot of times we feel regret for, for example, a, a, a choice that we made, whether it's a, a career choice. We'll get to that in a second. Regret is the emotion that a lot of times will will be the thing that makes you pivot, that pit in your stomach that says, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have been this or that. I shouldn't have chosen this career. I shouldn't have made that choice is the thing that makes us pivot and achieve what we originally wanted to uh, at the very beginning. So those are the pros, I would say. Now, some cons about regret. If you do not keep regret at bay, it can and will overwhelm you because it is that powerful. When you start to blame yourself for things that are outside of your control, like you couldn't have done anything about it, that is a, what's the word? That is a, a very logical, it's illogical, that's the word I was looking for. It's not logical for you to feel regret about something that you had absolutely uh, no control over. And a lot of times we do, we allow regret to overcome us for things that, you know, we were, we, we couldn't even make a difference in the situation. It was something that someone else did. We feel regretful about choices that other people, parents actually feel this many times where, where they will feel regretful or they will feel regret. And it wasn't even their choices. They raised their kid right. And their kid decided eventually to make their own choice about something. It was their choice. And the parent still feels gripped with regret. That's where I feel like if we don't keep it at bay and we don't think about where the root is with this regret, if it's based on a bunch of lies, if it's based on a situation where it's out of our control, that is where regret uh, can really be a poison. Another example is if you are at, let me bring it ba uh, back to healthcare. If you are a nurse and you ta you're taking care of uh, a patient and you are doing everything that you can to be able to save this patient, and eventually they pass. Some in, in many instances, most instances probably, um, the choices that that person made, that that patient made, was what caused them to be in that situation. And there was nothing that you could do as a clinician to save that patient. And when that patient passes, a lot of times we feel regret. I should have done something. And if we're not careful with what we do with regret or keep it at bay, it can overcome us for situations, illogical situations like that. It wasn't your fault. There was nothing that you could do outside of the realm of your practice and outside of what you did in the time frame that you were caring for that patient. You know what I mean? So 
this is the situation that's the situations where I would say regret can take over your your life and if you don't check it yo this is not something that I could have controlled that regret can can eat at you at your soul to the point where you will low key go crazy I said this earlier regret this is another con can cause analysis para- paralysis the fear of future decisions I don't want to make the wrong decision that's my thing I want to be I want to be do I want to do the right thing. Anybody else feel that? I want to do the right thing and that pressure of I want to do the right thing causes analysis paralysis because you know what it feels like to regret something when you make a wrong choice. So that is that is one of the problems with regret. When we don't deal with the with the regret that overtakes us like this, it will lead to physical mental and spiritual um, health decline. It will affect every area of our life because it brings in, that, that regret turns into shame. And remember what I said about shame. Shame is something that, you know, there, there should be no room for shame. There's nothing positive about shame. It is, it is negative through and through, shame is. So there's a difference between that and guilt or regret, but if you let regret or guilt sit with you and take control um, of your life, it will turn into shame and shame will destroy you. Shame will destroy you. Listen to me. It will destroy you. Shame is involved in, if not at the root of almost all mental health problems. Shame is. At the end of the day, it's either not feeling that you're good enough, you know, feeling like you will never attain the goals that you have set out, make anyone happy, you will never be good enough to be loved. At some point or another, shame is involved in almost every mental health issue. So this is why it's important. Find freedom when you are at a crossroads and you begin to feel regret. Realize that you have a choice to look at regret in a healthy way and not allow it to take control over your life. Okay, so here's how I deal with regret. I want to I want to kind of share a little bit of the way that I approach it because, you know, I'm not some clinical psychologist. I'm not some, uh, you know, person with a doctorate degree and all this stuff, but I feel like maybe, you know, the way that I approach it may help somebody else and take it or leave it. I'm here for it. Don't, you know, don't mind being corrected either. So if you feel that there's uh, something that I'm missing, comment below if you're on YouTube and let me know how you deal with regret. But this is how I deal with it. Whenever I start to feel that it's overwhelming me. I'll get this feeling like, oh man, I should have done this. You know, gosh, my life would have been so different if I had just done this. And when I begin to feel this way, it's, it begins to, I mean, it's pretty overwhelming because, uh, like I said, it affects me a lot. I'm the kind of person that wants to do the right thing from the, from the get go. And if I don't do the right thing, it probably has to do something with my childhood, but if if I don't do the right thing, I am a failure. You know, that's that's the way that my psyche, my brain works. If I feel like I've made the wrong choice, I am a failure. So I need to make the right choices. I need to make others proud of me. I, you know, seek validation with the approval of others, ba- you know, based on what they think of my decisions. The first thing that I do when I think about, you know, is regret overwhelming me is I stop. Let me tell you, if I don't stop, when I start to feel this way, it gets really bad to the point where, you know, I'm crying on the floor, okay? Just full disclosure here. I stop everything and I ask myself, was this choice or this thing that I have regret about, was that in my control? That's the first question I need to ask myself because that will correct me immediately. Was that thing in my control. If the if the answer is no, like I was not in control of that situation, it's easy for me at least to be able to dismiss that because it'll correct me immediately. I'd be like, "Okay, well, 
I don't know why I'm feeling regret over this because I couldn't have done any, anything about it. But if the question, but if the answer is yes, that I was f- in full responsibility for that choice that I made, I was in control of the situation and I chose to do this and that is why I feel regretful. The second question is consider what my life would have been. I tell myself, all right, let's play into it. What would have happened if I actually had made that choice? Is it all that w- it would have been cracked up to be? Because a lot of times it's based on lies. Like if I had made this choice, all things would be perfect right now. That's what I tell myself. And so I think back and I say, okay, if I had made the choice that I would have wanted to or that I look back, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. If I had made this other choice, how would my life had played out? And a lot of times we don't really know, but sometimes it'll give us an idea to say, you know what, maybe it's not all that it's cracked up to be, that other choice, that alternative. If you start to say, well, I should have made this choice, a lot of times it affects many other choices down the line. Our choices are important, people. They have, they are a catalyst to other things in our life. It's a domino effect. So one choice causes many other things to happen in your life. If I had made this other choice that right now I'm so regretful about, all of these other blessings, all of these other things that I love about my current life would have, would have not happened. Truthfully, I, I think about that. There have been moments, I will tell you, there have been moments where I regret going to nursing. I shouldn't have done nursing school. I should have picked a different path. I should have done business. I should have done, um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't really think of anything else because I love too many things. But when I think about it a little bit more, I consider what my life would have been had I not chosen nursing. Look at the blessings that you have in life now. And when you start to be overtaken by regret, of course, I don't know all of the answers. I don't know where I, you know, would have been if I had chosen something else, but I probably wouldn't have met my wife. I probably wouldn't have started this podcast. I probably wouldn't have stayed here in Dallas. Maybe my my degree would have taken me out to a different state and I wouldn't be here with my family, you know, close to my brother or close to my my sisters and my mom. Like the amount of things that I would have missed possibly, again, possibly, um, are exponential. And to think that I wouldn't have met my wife had I not done nursing, I thank God for nursing. I thank God for nursing (laughs) because I'm happy with my wife. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, thinking that if I had made this other choice, my life would have been perfect is a lie. So it's not truly regret. It's just the feeling of what if. You know, what if, and if you spend too much time thinking about, oh, what if I had made a different choice, you're just basing your entire life on lies, you know? I don't want to lose uh, track. Number one was to stop everything and ask, was it in my control? Number two would be to consider what my life would have been. The third question, if, you made, you, if you've made this assessment and you determined, look, no, this is truly regret. I, like, I really should have done something else, you know, because of... I'm not happy the way that the dominoes have fallen, you know, hypothetically. I'm not happy with the way that my life has played out because of that first decision that I made. If it's truly regret, I would say two things. Number one, either take action immediately or you make note of the lessons that you learned and you move forward. Do something because if you stay idle, If you stay complacent, years are going to go by and you are going to ask the same question filled with regret. Why didn't I do something? So take action. This is the moment where you would say, I've got to change course. I've got to to apologize for something that I said to someone or I've got to make a, a massive, for example, career change. I've got to change jobs. I've got to move to a different state. The point is, Take action. I do want to make a note that sometimes we cannot make this big life change. Sometimes we cannot go back to school. Sometimes the bus or the train comes by and we don't hop on and it is gone. And there's no way for us to get back on the train. Sometimes there are situations that are very painful like that. Like you did, you truly did miss an opportunity. And there's no way of going back and trying to change it or anything that you do now that will help recover in any way 
what you lost, okay? I don't know what it is for your situation. I don't know the details, but I hope that this is speaking to somebody. If you cannot take action immediately, you've got to stay where you are or there's a situation in your life that doesn't allow you to take that action, make note, make that action at least, make note of the the lessons that you've learned so that when you move forward in your life, you don't miss another opportunity or you have the blessing of sharing the wisdom to someone else and mentoring someone else so that they don't miss their opportunities in their life. There is always something positive to bring out of the pain of regret. There's always a a positive approach that you can take to that situation. Learn the lessons that regret is trying to teach you in your life. Don't run from them. Don't avoid them. Learn the lessons. Ask yourself, what is this feeling trying to tell me about myself, about my situation, and the life lessons that I have an opportunity and blessings to learn from in this moment of my life? Okay, it's easy to sit here and talk about scenarios that are somehow, they feel distant to us because we don't actually apply it to our lives. You know, talking about living that next level life, when when you're just talking about these general concepts about, and you can apply it to many different things, but when it hits home, right, that's, that's when it really means something. So I'm gonna share a little bit about how this topic really came to be the reason why I decided to choose to talk about this on this episode when I was thinking about, oh, you know, what what kind of things would be beneficial for nurses and stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk about something that I'm currently struggling with. And it was this. It was this. I've shared this before on this podcast, but I had a plan when I was going to leave nursing school to go and work for two years or something and go back and go to school because it was really important to me to get higher education and specifically go to CRNA school because I was fascinated with the idea of me being a CRNA. Now, I had a choice to make when I worked at the hospital at a place where I was very unhappy to decide, okay, I have an opportunity here to either go back to school because I had already worked two years at the bedside in a, in a ICU I either go back to school and make this effort now, or I try to discover, you know, something else that's tugging at my heart, um, and I'm not sure which way to go. And it was a very serious, it was a very serious uh, decision to make because I knew that if I would go straight to CRNA school, it would be kind of like it's it's all or nothing. You know, you go in. And it's all or nothing because after that, you're going to spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on education. um, And then you're going to get a job in that area that you went to study. So you better, you know, you better be serious about it because it's not only is it expensive and it's what you're going to do for, you know, the foreseeable future, but also you're committing to going through the, the fire because CRNA school is very difficult. So, you know, Am I going to make this choice to go to CRNA school like I've always dreamed, or am I going to try something, um, you know, something creative because that's always been a gift of mine, something creative, something on your own, and see how it plays out. So I had these two big decisions, and I felt like I needed to choose one or the other, and I decided um, after a lot of thinking and a lot of prayer and, and talking to my, my family you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go for trying something creative. And then years later, here I am. Um, I'm working for a company as the, you know, the videography and photography director. I still work at the bedside every once in a while. And now I'm trying to build this business that was sort of this dream that, you know, started back then when I was trying to make this decision to go back to school or not. Every once in a while, I got to tell you, Every once in a while, I will feel regret. 
for not having taken the opportunity to go to CRNA school. And there are triggers. There are triggers that, you know, I'll be fine. And all of a sudden there's a trigger that hits me and I'll I'll start to go on this downward spiral of I should have made that other choice. Because, you know, and I'll tell you, I'll be very honest because I feel like that's what we need when we're talking about these serious issues, honesty. You know, let's be honest about the things that we struggle with. Social media, uh, comparison to others, you know, what achievements and w- what people have graduated with, um, uh, what things people are doing in their own personal lives and comparing it to mine. Um, someone asking me, you know, when I'm going back to school, when I see them, whether I'm talking to a, an old professor of mine or, you know, some of my old classmates, you know, because they also knew that I had these plans to go to CRNA school or graduate school. Another trigger would be when I feel like, you know, things are going wrong with the choices that I'm making now in my business. You know, it's not uh, performing as well as it, whatever it may be. um, It's a trigger for me to say, I should have blankety blank, blank, blank. I should have just gone to CRNA school, you know, look at all these years that I could have you know, been in nursing uh, CRNA school and graduated and now have been a doctor and all this stuff and whatever. And when those triggers hit me, regret fills my mind. Regret fills my mind. But I'll tell you this, when I stop, remember I told you stop, consider, you know, what life would be like. And if it's regret, you know, those steps that I told you how I would deal with it. When I stop and I think about where my life would have been had I chosen that other thing, I start to realize, you know, I would have not been happy. It's lies that make me feel regretful that my life would have been, you know, great had I just done this other thing. And it's a very dangerous place to be because you you feel it's like poison. It affects everything. If you live in regret, nothing that you do in the present matters because you're always looking back. It's like driving down the highway, looking at your rear view mirror and not paying attention to what's in front. Oh, I should have taken that exit. Oh my goodness, I should have taken that exit. Oh, I should have taken that exit. Boom, you hit the person in front of you because you're thinking about you know, the exit that you should have taken five exits ago. The more I think about it, the more I realize, point blank, I would not have been happy if I had made that decision. I made the best decision that I could have made in the moment And now it's my role to be at peace with that decision. I was responsible for that choice. And even now when I see, you know, CRNAs on social media doing their thing, intubating, all that stuff, um, you know, it's it's awesome. I still think that there are aspects of that that interest me. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt when I think about it, you know, when those that regret hits me in the face, I know and I can fight back and say that's a lie. It's a lie that if I would have chosen that, I would have been happy. I truly wouldn't want to be, um, not that all CRNAs work in this area, but at four o'clock in the morning, you know, to make it to surgeries and putting people to sleep, you know, at the head of the table. Not that, that there's anything wrong with it, but what I'm saying is the reasons why I wanted to go, now I have clarity. The reasons why I wanted to go to CRNA school were not good reasons. I am grateful that I didn't make that decision. But every once in a while, I still get that feeling of regret. I still get that feeling of regret. Oh, you should have done this. Oh, you should have done this. You know, I was thinking about the money. I was thinking about the status. I was thinking about how, like, this is the top thing you can do when it comes to uh, nursing. You know, you get a lot of respect from other people. Um, you, You feel like you got your game all set. Like, those are all wrong reasons of going back to school, bro. Wrong reasons. You know, if you want to go back to school, and I'm not I'm not trying to discourage anyone from going to CRNA school. I truly am not. I have a lot of respect for the people who go and who become, you know, and I have friends that are in nursing, that CRNA school. Freaking awesome. Very, very happy for these people because it's very hard to do. And like I said, there's things that I still look back and I think that that'd be, it'd be freaking cool to be able to do all these things. But the reason to go would be to expand your scope of practice and to know that you are at peace after you've shadowed people that what the scope of practice entails is something that you want for your daily life. And I have come to peace with, I don't want that kind of lifestyle. I'm searching for something else. 
and that's okay. So whenever that uh, regret hits me, like I should have done something else and I would have been so much happier and I would have made more money and I would have blah, 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 all this stuff. I now have ammunition because I've had years to think about it where I stop everything that I'm doing and I say, wait, what, you know, was it in my control? Yes. Okay. If it was in my control to make that decision, I consider what life would have been like if I actually made it. And it stops right there because I am grateful for the way that my life has played out, for the people who are surrounding me, for the fact that I'm chasing my dream after this uh, business that I'm trying to create, the, pe- the fact that I'm working with people currently in my, in my full-time job and in my part-time job that I love, that I respect. And regret teaches me my weaknesses. Regret initiates my search for truth to face the lies that tell me that I should have done something else. It has initiated that search for truth in my life. Hey, I just want to thank you for listening. It means the world to me, especially because at the time of this recording, I'm still only a couple months from starting this whole thing. So if you're interested in helping me build this brand even more, please share this podcast on your social media and grab some merch from the website at niceveinsbro.com. Got some great stuff there for sale. Send me a DM on Instagram and share some encouragement, some love and some hate. I will welcome that too, but don't be shy. Talk to you soon. Everyone's going to feel regretful about something. The point is that we need to make sure we use it to our advantage of that situation, that emotion, to learn, to grow, and to expand our knowledge about ourselves and how we live in this life. That's it for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you maybe got something from it. If you did, please share what you learned about yourself, Um, something that you disagreed with. I'm open to be corrected. Um, I don't know everything. Uh, but start the dialogue. I would love to read your comments. If you're on YouTube, uh, comment below, like the video, subscribe, all the good stuff to help the algorithm and kick this out to other people. If you are listening to this on a platform, I encourage you to please rate it and to share it with a friend that you feel like would benefit from it. As always, remember to be a positive force within healthcare and society. Que Dios me los bendiga. When I would listen to podcasts before I became a podcaster myself, I didn't realize how much leaving a five-star review helped. And so now on this side, I just want you to know that it really does mean a whole lot when people review and share the content. So if you enjoyed it, please share it with somebody and leave a five-star review on whichever platform you use, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And if you're interested, you can also find us on social media at NiceVeinsBro or shop online at niceveinsbro.com. My personal stuff you can find under Nene Pablo, which is spelled N-E-N-E-P-A-B-L-O. I spend most of my time on YouTube making vlogs and videos and on Instagram. So I would love to connect with you. And remember, be a positive force and influence within healthcare and society. It's all about God, wellness, and purpose here. Thank you for listening. (laughs) 